In this video, we're gonna learn how you can integrate Firebase Analytics in your iOS app. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below. Excuse me if I sound like I'm dying because I've been a little sick the past few days, but did wanna put out a video. So let's get into things. So we're gonna open up a Xcode project. I've got this Rick and Morty app that we've built on this channel here, and we're gonna integrate uh, Firebase Analytics into this. You can use obviously whatever project you'd like, but first things first, we want to actually bring in Firebase and configure it. So we're gonna do that via Swift Package Manager. So once we open up our project, we're going to go to File, Add Packages. We'll paste in the uh, URL, the source control GitHub repo URL for Firebase, and you'll find the Firebase iOS SDK. Hit continue with whatever version it populates. Usually the default is fine. And it's gonna resolve all the packages sub of this repo. There's going to be um, Firebase Analytics, Auth, and all the various other ones that uh, it, it gives you here. So we're gonna wanna check the ones that are relevant for us, which is Firebase Analytics. If you scroll down here, I guess we can also do Analytics, Swift, and these other ones as well. I'm not actually quite sure. The ones that I know for a fact you need are Analytics and Analytics Swift. And if we continue down here, you'll see we've got all the other Firebase permutations of their offerings. Let's see if there's anything else in here that we need. Looks like it. there is not, so we'll continue. And just like that, we should have Firebase installed. Let's give our app a build and run in a simulator to make sure things are still indeed compiling. The next thing that we need to go ahead and do is configure Firebase in our app delegate. So let's open up appdelegate.m. Uh, I am indeed working, rather appdelegate.swift. I am indeed working in a UI kit app. So in Swift UI, you would do this in your main actor or main app where your window is set up. So let's go and import Firebase here. And what we wanna call in application did finish launching with options is Firebase app.configure. Now, before you give your app a build and run, you're gonna actually see uh, an issue when you build and run it because it'll crash. And the reason it'll crash is actually correct. It's because we're missing a Firebase configuration file that we need to bring in. To do that, let's open up our main project navigator window here. And what we'll wanna copy is our bundle ID. For me, that is this guy right here, which for whatever reason, I can't click and copy, but it's io.iosacademy.rickandmorty. You'll wanna go to the Firebase console, so firebase.com, log in with your Google account, and we'll create a project here. So let's do Firebase Rick, or let's just do Rick and Morty. Don't think I've used that already. We'll continue here. We'll pretend like we read everything and we are good to go. We'll select the default analytics account. This is important since this is the Google Analytics account where your data will go. Wait for it to set up the project and get its life together. And while it's actually doing that, back on our project, we're gonna create a object that will handle logging all of our analytics. So I've actually got this managers folder. I'm gonna open it up and create a object in here called analytics manager. I know, I know, super creative. So we'll create this and essentially this is going to be used as a singleton. So let's create a class called analytics manager. We'll have a private constructor in here and we're gonna have a static shared instance. So we'll say shared will be our analytics manager. Now we're gonna obviously put some functions on here to log analytics, but we're gonna talk about the best way to do that momentarily. So cool, so hopefully by the time you do that, you have created a project and it is ready and good to go. We'll want to add an iOS app. So here is where it wants your bundle ID. So I'll do ios.iosacademy.rick and Morty, I believe that is correct. Um, for the name, we'll just say Rick and Morty iOS, and we'll just leave that Apple ID empty, hit continue, and this is where it will spit out to you a Google services plist. You'll wanna hit download, and this is the thing we'll want to drag into our project. So let me just drag this onto my desktop for a hot minute, and we'll just hit next, next, next here, pretend like we're reading everything. Yep, we totally read this, continue. All right, so we are actually good to go. 
So back in Xcode, let's bring in um, at that services plist that we got. So I have a resources folder, so I'll drag it into there. You can leave all these checkboxes as default. And just like that, we should be good to go. So now give your application another build and run, and you should be able to basically see no changes, but your app should not be crashing. If your app is crashing for any reason, it is because you have not properly bought, brought in the services plist. Um, and actually in the console, if you hit command shift Y, let's open up that bottom console there, you should actually see some messages and logs down here relating to Firebase. So you can actually see here version 10.9.0 started, uh, actually tells you Firebase analytics, so you should be good to go. Cool, so it is indeed integrated. Let's get to writing some code and logging some analytics. So it's pretty simple to actually log analytics, but you wanna build this in a way that's both reusable and kind of readable from a functional perspective. So what we wanna do is of course import Firebase analytics so we can reference it. And let's create a simple public function off of this. And I'm gonna call this log event. And let's just do a very simple example. So let's do analytics. And it has a creatively named property off of here called log event. It takes a name for the event, which is a string, and a parameter dictionary, which is you know a key of a string and a value of any. So let's see how we would do this. So in our app here, for those not familiar with this app, we basically have this you know these four tabs. We can see episodes, locations, and um, characters related to the Rick and Morty TV show, and perhaps we want to know whenever the user clicks on a character or perhaps we want to know whenever the user changes a screen, right? So for clicking on a character, this one's pretty simple. So let's say we create a function here of, hey, log event for character tap. Maybe the event name here would be character tap or maybe character selection. And then parameter, maybe we would want to know what character did you, did you tap on, right? So let's say the character is Rick. Now, we can obviously pass all of these things in via parameters, but you can quickly start to see how this would not only become ridiculous in terms of trying to manually pass in arguments from every single call site, but also the fact that we'll have eventually, and you can imagine in a large app, dozens if not hundreds of functions in here, right? Large apps from the likes of Google and Microsoft or these big companies, they do a ridiculous number of things in their apps. So this is by no means the most scalable solution. So let's think of a way that's better. So it turns out there is a pretty nifty way that we can abstract this into models that represent our events. So let's actually do that. So let's say we have a function here that is generic, that is log event, or maybe we can just say uh, log, and it's going to take in a event, and we can call this an analytics event. And what I'll do is I'll create an enum down here, and this will be called analytic event or analytics event. And let's do that same character selection example. So let's say we have a event called character selected. And for each of these, what we want is a computed property called event name. And we will switch on self, which is our enum. And let's just do the single case we have here. For this, the event name will be character selected. Okay, pretty similar. So similar to what we got here, instead of manually passing it in, we can get it from this computed property. We actually want the return keyword here. But how do we get the associated parameters? This is the jazz that I really want to focus on because this is the this is kind of the bread and butter of our analytics, right? Like what did we select on? Where did we select on it from, right? Did we select the character from this first tab? Or did we go into locations and via locations we picked a character from in here? Point being, there's permutations we want to handle. So this is where associated values are going to come in. So here we're going to say character selected and we're going to say this has a associated value uh, and this we will use as another model. So we'll call this a RM character selected event. So we'll create this right down below. And this will be nothing more than just a basic struct. The important thing about this struct is that it does need to be codable. And you'll see in a moment why. And let's say on this we have things like character name, should be a string, maybe we'll have origin. 
Um, and here we could perhaps also pass in a string. Maybe we'll have uh, our timestamp, which will basically be a date, so on and so forth. So here we have a, uh, a event enum, where we have the name that we get from the computer property and the properties for the actual analytic event itself that we get from the associated value. So let's implement this log function in a generic way now. Well, the event name is pretty similar. Uh, we can say event dot event name. Good to go. Okay, what about these parameters? Because what we actually have on our event here is a uh, is a associated value. So how do we go about getting that out? So let's just make it simple and let's say we're gonna switch on our event here and we'll let Swift do its thing in autocomplete. And here we have the actual event, uh, the actual event uh, model, I should say. The naming is slightly confusing on my part here. And let's actually get the dictionary out. So here we're gonna say our uh, variable for parameters is going to be a dictionary of string and any and we're just going to instantiate it. It's going to be empty to start off. This is the thing we'll pass into our actual event log. And what we'll want to do inside of here is try to assign this, but we don't want to manually query this model because not only is that verbose, but it's just slightly ridiculous in terms of how much work it is. So we know that we made this model codable. Why did we do that? Well, we can not only encode this to data, but then we can re-decode this to a dictionary representation. So let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna toss in a uh, do catch block here, and I'm just doing one event as an example. Obviously, you don't wanna have a million do catches, but let's first get data from our model here that we're passing in. So we're going to say JSON encoder, and we're gonna say, hey, try to encode this model that we are passing in as an associated value. Once we have the data, we wanna get a dictionary out. So I'll say dictionary will be JSON serialization and make sure you prefix it try. Uh, we're gonna say, give us a JSON object with input data. And you'll see it will return any. So what we wanna cast this to is going to be as a dictionary of string and any. And because this is nullable, we'll want to coalesce it to a empty dictionary. So if you try to compile this, we should be good to go. Now, assuming we have gotten this far, we're gonna say our parameters will be our dictionary. Now, before we give this a run by putting a call site for this somewhere, I'm just gonna print out what we are actually logging. So we are going to print out and say event, and our event will be event dot event name, and params will be our parameters dictionary that we have presumably successfully encoded and decoded and assigned right up here. So let's put a call site for this somewhere and see this in action. So I'm also gonna add some doc strings as good practice. So manager to handle app analytics. And let's, let's get to it. So for the simplest case for character selection, we have a character view controller. So let me just go ahead and find where uh, the heck we actually handle that character tap. So we'll open character view controller. And I wanna say there's a delegate call in here to open a uh, detail screen. So here it indeed is. So open detail. So here we'll say analytics manager shared what do we want to log? Well, we only have one event, so that makes life easy. Character selected, and inside of here, we want to instantiate that particular associated parameters model. Okay, character name. So we have a character model in our arguments coming in. So we can say character dot name should be on here. Okay, looking pretty good. What's the origin? Perhaps for this later on, we'll create an enum to make it type safe. But here, I'll just actually just paste the name of this view controller. This is the origin through which we are um, making this selection for a character. And the timestamp will ju basically just be an instance of date, which is instantiated by default with the current date. So let's hit Command B to make sure everything is compiling. I'll open up my console with a command shift Y and let's give this a build and run and make sure we see the analytic event that we are capturing. 
So I'll clear out this uh, stuff down here with Command K, and we'll select a character. So let me select Rick here. We'll come here, and if you look at that, we selected a character. So we got the character selected event, and the parameters is a nicely formatted dictionary of the associated data to this event. So our timestamp, it actually calculated a uh, Unix timestamp or time interval, I should say. We've got the character name, and then we, of course, have the origin as well. So that's a brief example of how you can leverage Firebase Analytics to spring analytic logs across your entire application. Um, analytics are important for obvious reasons. I'm not going to beat the dead horse with that. But one thing that I will call out that I think is noteworthy is you want to be mindful of not just putting analytics around your app for every single thing. Make sure they're actually useful. Make sure you're optimizing it for insights and not just collecting a bunch of data for the sake of having data. And you want to build this, of course, in a way that's reusable from an API perspective, but also from a readability perspective. If we jump back to this character view controller, in this case, I would argue this is nice and readable because we're clearly logging the character selected event. And then this event has some associated data in the form of, let me just line break this, in the form of this associated value. And it's quite clear to the developer, whoever's working on this, what the heck this is doing. So that is all I've got in this video today. Before clicking away, make sure you hit that like button. If not for analytics, then for me being sick and putting out a video. Uh, share the channel, follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, keeping this community growing together on our way to 100,000 subs. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.